New campaign changes are crazy. It's a sleek start, I've been testing them to find new strategies. Starting in the flooded depths, the Dweller is essenced. And since it's a level 6 zone, there are only 4 essences to be essenced by. Greed, Contempt, Hatred, and Woe. For attack-based builds, Contempt and Hatred are desirable. For casters, Woe. But early on at low levels, even single damage mod in either build can significantly improve clear speed and single target damage. Which might tempt you to complete the Dweller immediately after Mudflats, because in theory, extra damage might help reach level 10 prisoners get power spike faster. But I still believe the normal routing of placing a portal and taking it at the lower prison waypoint is the optimal strategy. It's also worth noting that low item level boots have a higher chance of fitting movement speed, so if you don't need a strong weapon and have good links, this might be a better option. Dashing towards the climb, you'll find a guarantee legion, which surprisingly is not that deadly. And if you clear it, you can get tons of rare items, currency, and potentially a full level. But it will cost around a minute or more of your time, and requires strong gear in advance to even consider clearing it efficiently. For example, on a ranger, this can mean two iron rings and a third source of flat damage, which can be hard to achieve at that point. Whereas on a templar, if you use two goat horns of the rolling magma elite prolif, you can pretty much full clear the legion. In my opinion, the current iteration is definitely a case of the strong gets stronger, and for weaker builds, I'm not sure if it achieves its potential gearing purpose. So for solo runs, if I'm running by it, I will click the Legion and clear whatever stasis monsters are on the way, because they will provide a small but meaningful amount of experience. For casual leveling or in situations where we are strongly geared before the climb, investing a minute for a ton of rares and another level is not a bad trade. And in party play, if you're not the main runner, I believe it's a great spot to get geared up and find potential upgrades for yourself or your teammates. As it stands right now, the Climb Legion is both underrated and underused, but if the devs deemed it needed a buff, reducing both the stasis timer and HP in half might be something to consider. Moving on to the Upper Prison, this addition is huge, because you can find a can of strong bucks that will drop a bunch of flasks, but more importantly, quicksilvers. In my testing, I found it to drop anywhere between 0 to 5 quicksilvers, with an average between 1 or 2. My worst box opens are a single small life for mana flasks, and my best box open is 5 quicksilvers, a bismuth, and multiple higher tier life and mana flasks. Quicksilvers will of course help you zoom faster, but the other nice thing about this addition is it can help you read the layout, because first, it's usually in a fixed location depending on the randomly chosen layout topology, and secondly, with the recent changes to strong boxes being shown on the minimap, it becomes easy to find. So at runs where I'm not using an attack-based movement skill, I always go for it, and runs where I am using an attack-based movement skill, I sometimes go for it. And the reason I sometimes go for it is because in any run with excess Quicksilvers, you can do the movement speed vendor craft multiple times to create 30 MS boots. Blinking ahead to the ship graveyard, there are two notable changes to mention. First, exiting the ship graveyard cave now teleports you to Fairgraves, which means when we find the first cave, instead of entering it immediately, it's optimal to place a portal outside, travel to the Cavern of Wrath, go to town from the waypoint, and then take our own portal back to ship graveyard, pick up the all flame, and finally complete the Fairgrave quest. Now, if you don't have a portal scroll, there are two options. Option one, if you find the ship graveyard waypoint, you can enter the cave when you first find it, complete the Fairgrave's quest, log out, then continue forward from the ship graveyard waypoint afterwards. Option 2, you can run forward to the Cavern of Wrath, then run backwards to the cave to complete the quest. Both options are the best, but I would mostly pick option 2 because it means when we log out after Fairgraves to pick up our skill point, we would also get an opportunity to take our level 12 quest reward. Now I did mention there are two notable changes in the ship graveyard, and the second change is, there is a pirate's treasure which spawns a unique drunken corsair and two ghosts. If you let the corsair get ghosted, you can get a ton of magic and rare loot, which is especially notable because it's a monster level 11 zone. The odds of getting an upgrade with item level 11 to 13 loot are quite high, but the catch is it can be difficult to find, making it a rare addition to any run. Now what's especially interesting are the three rogue exiles in the broken bridge. They are incredibly easy to find, because they are always in the ruins beside the waypoint, huddled in the corner or on the unlit campfire. If you click the jewelry cache beside them, they will become hostile, which is okay because we want their loot. Rogue exiles drop a full set of gear, so it's a great way to get upgrades or a lot of unidentified items, sell for transutes and alterations. Whether I go for it or not depends on my gear and whether I immediately need alterations in Act 2 or transmutations for level 24 crafts in Act 3. For casual leveling or to create a high gear scenario, I can strongly recommend it. Moving on to the Vol Ruins, one of the harder layouts just got a little bit easier because there is a corruption altar inside that can lead you to the exit. I did previously speculate that this might be a double corruption altar, but after testing and proving the wisdom of the masses, it is simply a single corruption altar. That being said, it still has some interesting use cases, but the most obvious one being Vol Skill Gems. In this run here, you can see me create a Vol Rain of Arrows, which will add a lot of single target damage, allowing me to kill rares and bosses much faster. Now this is the type of thing you want to plan for, so these gems are of potential interest, depending on the run you're going for. Other than gems, we can also consider corrupting items. In the current Firecaster leveling meta, corrupting a Sword, Mace, or Axe for onslaught on kill is definitely of interest, and for bow builds, corrupting covers for flat elemental damage to attacks would be a welcome upgrade. Corrupting rings are also a strong consideration, because they are usually normal rarity at this point, and with large amounts of elemental damage in Act 3 approaching, this is a great opportunity to potentially make a rare resist ring. 
Additionally, you can potentially hit flat elemental damage to both spells and attacks for more damage instead. This definitely adds a bit of RNG for speedrunning, but for any casual or chill leaks or leveling, depending on the gem you need, it can definitely come a nice addition. You can also simply consider leaving it for later, if you want to save a Vault Orb. Entering the Northern Forest, one of the best XP zones in the game just got better. Because in addition to the strong boxes and beasts, you'll find 3-4 rituals, meaning significantly more XP in each run. It's important to note, if you're looking to reset and farm the zone for XP, do not click any ritual, because if you do, they won't spawn in the next reset. That being said, playing the ritual might be a good idea, because it could potentially be a good source of currency for upgrades, omens, and even unique items. Currency or items are somewhat self-explanatory, and omens provide a potential RNG moment if you can manage to get the Soul Eater Omen, to possibly delete any upcoming bosses. It's also worth stating that finding a unique item is not guaranteed, and having enough favor to afford it is another problem altogether. Now nearby in the Dread Thicket, you will also find 3-4 rituals, but it's out of the way, so I wouldn't really value or consider it for any type of run. Progressing forward to the caverns, you find a secret room that provides this increased damage with the Volskull's Craft. Increased damage as a stat is very powerful early game, because we generally don't have lots of it, and if we hit a Vol Gem earlier in the Vol Ruins, this can be quite the damage upgrade. However, it requires a Vol Orb, something you might not have at this point, which adds some extra consideration for keeping the rituals in the zone prior. Alternatively, we can farm Vol Side areas throughout the run, building towards this recipe if you don't naturally drop one. Now, the last change is a nice one. Some waypoints are picked up automatically, and most notably this one in the Slave Pens, and with proximity waypoints to 325, crashing, logging out, or simply forgetting a waypoint should be much less punishing. Now, most of these changes have been in the first two acts, but I am curious what they might add in the future. So on that note, here's some simple but hopefully interesting ideas. Starting in Act 4, the first thought that comes to mind is a large number of bosses and general monster HP increase in the latter half of the act. I believe adding more methods to upgrade weapons or the damage of our character would be impactful. So that can be in the form of fossils and resonator caches, or even just a ton of sulfite to encourage a different but novel early game delve strategy. But moving away from delve, what if we brought back old bandit rewards and had more bandit-like buffs to choose from? Or, what if there was a room with a giant king harbinger that was guaranteed to drop multiple orbs of binding? Or, if I was to jump three patches ahead, what if Act 10 Ban offered a 5 link chest or an account bound orb of 5 linking? What if, right? I think there's an argument to do some crazy things, especially since these changes can be account bound and have a single use per character. All in all, it's been refreshing to play an updated campaign, so I hope they continue to make more interesting changes, and aren't afraid to go crazy, even if it's only for a league or two. If you guys have any simple, amusing, or even extreme ideas, I'd love to hear them. Maybe the devs are lurking, and they might actually implement them. Who knows? Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day, Exiles. Bye.